Welcome back to lab two on descriptive statistics. We are just about to head into the practical sections. We're in practical section one and two for this video. We're gonna talk about importing data, calculating means and making graphs. And we're gonna be using the tidyverse approach to do these things. Just a quick note, uh, the main point of the practical examples are to provide example code where you can modify the code to accomplish these goals quickly. Uh, we'll focus less on the fundamental R uh, scripts and algorithms underlying these functions and focus more on using them. Across the semester, we'll dive, we'll take some dives into uh, how the functions are working. And in class time, we can certainly talk more about uh, the details of using these functions but the aim of this video will be to be a short 10 to 15 minute quick example. Okay, so importing data. Uh, in this example, we're going to use the read.table function, but uh, before we use some function to grab some data from somewhere and import it into R, you need to have some data to, to import into your system. So what you can do is download this zip file, all right, right from the lab. And it contains a folder called open data. And uh, there's a bunch of different data files in there. Uh, these are all taken from published psychology papers or some other various open sources where the authors have made their data publicly available. And um, what you wanna do in your R project. So for me, I've got a, an R markdown file right here, lab two descriptives, and we're gonna be looking at stuff in this practical examples. That RMD file exists in this folder. And in the same folder where my RMD file is, I've put the unzipped open data folder. So this folder contains a bunch of data. And when you work on your generalization assignment for this week, I'm gonna show you some examples of where to put this folder so that you can access the data from it. Uh, I've got the folder, I've got some data. So now I want to show you an example of loading the data into R. First of all, I'm going to clear the workspace so that we don't have anything in our workspace. There it is, our environment is empty. And we're gonna load something called the Gapminder data. This is located in the gapminder.csv file right here. If you click on this, you could view it. It's a CSV file. That stands for comma separated value. When you look in the file, you can see there are values and separated by commas. If effectively, this is a tabular format with columns and rows and we can use the read.table function to load this into R. This function requires that we first specify the name of the file and its location. So it is located in the open underscore data folder slash and the name of the file is gapminder.csv. So we put that in quotes. The separator between all of the elements is a comma. So we define that here. So it will separate those elements out for us and we're giving the command header equals true. And if you look at the top, you can see that we've got some headers for our columns, country, continent, year, life, expect life expectancy, population, and GDP per capita. So if we run this, we've now loaded in the CSV file as a data frame called gapminder underscore data. You can click this little icon to see its contents. You can click this whole thing and you can see the data frame sitting right here and you can kind of look at it. It looks a little bit like an Excel spreadsheet. You can type it in here and see it print out. Uh, when there's a lot of rows, it won't print out all the rows in the console. So there you have it. We've loaded in a comma separated value file. At this point, I'll note that there are many other ways and other functions in other packages to accomplish this same goal. And we will touch on some of those throughout this semester. 
So the next thing we might want to do now that we have some data is calculate some means. So let's first look at the data and just talk about what we have here. We can sort of make sense of it by seeing that, okay, we've got different countries. We've got um, countries in different continents. We've got years. And then we've got some measures, three different measures. Apparently we are measuring life expectancy in each country for different years. We also have a population in the country and the GDP per capita in each country for each year. So this is a pretty big data frame with all these values. If we wanted to calculate means of, for example, what is the mean life expectancy across all countries in all years? Well, we would want to find inside of this data frame the one column that contains all of the life expectancy values. So we use the dollar sign and then we identify the particular column name we want and this will have all of those values. We could put that in the mean function and calculate the mean to be 59.47. Similarly, we could calculate the mean of the population for all those countries in years and the mean the GDP per capita. Now, obviously, there is, uh, for example, for Afghanistan here, our first country, there's uh, lots of life expectancy values across the years, similar for the other measures. And what we might want to do is calculate a mean just for Afghanistan. Or we might say, oh, well, let's calculate the mean life expectancy for um, all of the different continents collapsing over country. So this is a common thing, calculating means separately as a function of different factors, such as year, country, or continent. We can accomplish this goal using the dplyr library, part of the tidyverse. So if you remember at the very top in our demo, we installed tidyverse. If you've done that correctly, when you go to packages and go down, you should find that dplyr is installed. You will need that for this next section. So we're going to use this package called dplyr, or dplyr as I call it, in order to solve this problem. And uh, it's pretty simple actually. This package is great because it allows you to group the data by the levels of a factor. For example, all of the individual continents in the continent variable. Then summarize the data using some function like the mean and then look at the table of results. So this little code chunk here does all of that. First of all, it loads the library, and we need to load the library before we can use the functions. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the Gapminder data, and we're going to do some steps of processing to it using something called the pipe operator, and it looks like this, a percentage sign uh, right arrow and another percentage sign. The idea is we're going to take this data and do a step to it. The first step that we're going to do is we're going to group by the continents. And that effectively means we're going to group by the different levels in the continent variables. So we have Asia, Europe, Africa, Americas, Oceania, and so on. For each of the different levels of the continent factor, or variable, we are then going to produce a summary. We're going to use the summarize step. And in this step, we're going to calculate the mean. And what's going on here is we're calculating the mean of the life expectancy column, and we're going to store that value in a new variable that we're calling mean underscore life expectancy. So let's just run this really quick and see what happens. And if we take a look at group underscore means, we can see we've created a new table. And we have each of the different continents here. There's five of them in the table. And for each of them, we have created a mean, which is the mean life expectancy for each. Uh, there's five of them there. If we use um, this knitter, two colons cable, uh, we can then output a table to our document. So this is a very quick way to compute 
means as a function of the levels of a factor such as continent. Notice that we can add more in here. So what if you wanted the means for each country um, uh, in for each country grouping by country and continent. Uh, so we could do that like this, adding in con continent and country. So we now now we get a table, and this table is uh, clipped. It's only showing the first few rows. That's because our new data frame group means here. If we were to look at it, it has means for every single country. And uh, we've also split it, grouped it out by, we've included the information about which continent is there. So this is a useful table potentially if you wanted this information. And it's very long. So when you do something like attempt to look at a table that's very long, it will usually show only the first bit of it. And what I did here is I used the head function, which purposefully only shows the first few lines. If I didn't put this in there, it would show a whole bunch more lines and I just wanted to keep it minimized down. So another really great feature of the dplyr process is that uh, we can calculate many different descriptive statistics all in one go. For example, here, uh, we can add more calculations uh, just by adding a comma at the end and making another line for a new calculation. In this case, we're going to group by continent and um, calculate the mean, the median, the standard deviation, and the variance and let's take a look at what we've made here by looking at the group means data frame. And as you can see, for each continent, we've calculated the mean, the median, the standard deviation, and the variance. And if you only wanted to say the mean and the median, you can just go in there and delete the different things that you don't want, or you can add more. The general idea is you put the name of the new variable, that will be the name in your new table, equals, and then a function with an input that is the name of a column in the data frame. So if we wanted to do all of this for uh, population, we would change this life exp to pop for population. And so that's a very fast way to calculate all of those descriptive statistics and it's and you can customize it for whichever ones you want. So that is the end of practical one. We talked about importing data and calculating means using dplyr. We're now going to go on to the second practical section, which is plotting the means with ggplot2. So let's take a look at this example code. The first thing that we do is we calculate our group means. So let's say we wanted to plot the mean life expectancy for each of the continents. First, we need to find the means, just like we do here. And those now exist in this table called group means. We've got all of these uh, five mean values. The next step is to create a plot. And in this one line, ggplot, we successfully do that. Uh, note that in order for this function to work, you need to have called library ggplot2 at some point. So we've done that in this R Markdown document up here. And you can always find out if it's loaded in your current R session by scrolling down and seeing if the ggplot2 thing is clicked. But you need to load it at least once at the top of your R Markdown document, otherwise it won't work later on. And that would look something like this. If you put library ggplot2 in there before you run the, the function. Okay, we'll talk a lot about ggplot2 moving forward. For now, I'm going to note that we first 
the first thing we put here in the function is the name of the data frame containing the means you want to plot. And we put a comma, and then we set up what is called the aesthetics, the way the graph is going to look, that AES is short for aesthetics. In this case, we define what the x-axis will be. So the x-axis will be the different continents, and that will be the name of uh, a variable in the table. So group means has a continent variable, and we want each of these to be displayed across the x-axis. What do we want the y-axis to be? Well, that will be the means. So what is the name of the column with our means? It is mean underscore life exp. So we put the y equals to the, to the name of that variable. So we're just connecting these dots here for ggplot. Finally, we add a plus at the end, and this refers to the concept of adding a visual layer. You'll see in ggplot2, we can keep adding things and drawing onto the graph. So here we're going to draw onto the graph a bar plot known as a geome underscore underscore bar. And we have to supply this uh, argument in the middle, stat equals identity. And for now, just accept that this has to be done. When we run this code, we produce this plot. ggplots can be modified in numerous ways. Here's an example of adding. And every time we add, we do a plus at the end. We're adding some modifications. So this is the same as before, but now we add a modification to the Y label, and we've now called it mean life expectancy. That's different from up here. We've added a X label difference. So we've capitalized the C. I've added something called theme underscore classic that takes off the gray background. And I've added a title. So if we run all of those things, we get this graph. And you'll learn many more things you can modify in here to customize your graph as we go throughout the course. Here's an example of making a line graph. Instead of adding a geome underscore bar object, we add a point and a line. And so we're going to draw a po the points, and then we're going to draw the line on top. Now notice, in this case, we get actually a funny error message. We see the points but we don't see a line connect them. It turns out, and this will happen a lot with ggplot, there's some little details you'll probably have to learn about, and it's impossible to remember them all. So what I usually do is something like, oh, let's copy this error message and put it into Google, see if I can figure out how to make the lines appear. When I did that, in this case, I found an answer was set the group parameter to one, and this will produce lines. Okay, so we've now shown how to graph means with ggplot. Um, because this is a lab on descriptive statistics, we focus mostly on means and hardly at all discussed variances or standard deviations or things like that. When you're plotting means, you will often add error bars to the visual depiction of the mean that represent aspects of the variability. So here I have shown some ways where we can do that, that combine all the things we've learned. So first of all, if we wanted to add error bars to our mean life expectancy values for each of the continents, we first have to compute a measure of variability for each of the continents. So we go back to our dplyr um, piping functions where we take our original data, group it by continent, and then do some summary statistics, we calculate a mean, and in this case, I'm going to calculate a standard deviation to represent the variability. Now that we have both of those things, we can look here and see that we have a mean for each of the continents and a standard deviation for each of the continents in terms of life expectancy. Now in this example, I just want to run it quick and show you what we see. I've added error bars to each of the bars, and these error bars are plus one standard deviation, minus one standard deviation for each of the continents. So notice the 
error bar for Africa is larger than the error bar for Oceania, that means that the standard deviation over here is larger than the one over here, and we can see that in the group means. The standard deviation here is a 9, and that's larger than a 3.7. We can also add error bars to line plots just like this. I will quickly walk you through the code and explain what I've done. So in this line, I set up a ggplot. I input the group means data frame that contains, that's right here, it contains a line for continent mean and standard deviation now. I set up the aesthetics so that the x-axis will be the different continents and the y-axis will be the mean of each of the life expectancy values. In the next line, I'm adding a, a layer of bars that will be displaying the means for each of the continents. Next, there is a custom uh, object called geom underscore error bar. And here's where we add our error bars. This one also has an aesthetic. It requires a minimum y value and a maximum y value. Um, I'm not sure if I went off screen, a small value and a high value. And I'll quickly just so that we are on the same page, we've got some graph, we've got some bar, and we're gonna draw an error bar on it. This is the location of the mean. Um, if we wanna draw an error bar that goes down one, minus one standard deviation and goes up plus one standard deviation, um, this is uh, what we're trying to tell, we're trying to give ggplot this information. So this, this location here is the y min, the minimum y value. And this one is the y max, the maximum y value. Now, every single mean has its own minimum y value and its own maximum y value because what plus one and minus one standard deviation is, is different for each mean, as you can see here. For Africa, plus one standard deviation is 48 plus nine, and plus or minus one standard deviation is 48.8 minus 9.15. For the Americas, it's 64 plus 9.3 and minus 9.3. For Asia, it's 60 plus 11 um, or 60 minus 11. So we just write that formula inside of here. We say our y minimum will be equal to the values in the mean life exp column minus the values in the standard deviation column the y max values for each error bar will be the means plus the standard deviations the width parameter allows us to control how wide the the hat looks like and that is error bars with ggplot2 okay the next video will cover some examples going over the lab two generalization assignments and that's it for the practical section of lab two